everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I am sharing with you a video hop collaboration sort of a thing <laughs> that I am doing with Bay Grob, Peg Robinson and Gina Ahrens and the premise behind it is that we each make a seasonal background so this is going to happen four times a year this is the first one which is spring and then we scan this background and we share it with the others each of us prints out the background that was made on our printer and uses an artwork. So it's similar to the seasonal collaboration I did last year with Bea and some other artists where we mailed each other a postcard sized art. But this time, instead of mailing the physical art, we are giving it digitally. And this should encourage you to to make your own backgrounds, scan your own backgrounds and keep them for future use in your art. And also there's lots of people on Etsy and shops like that that sell digital download art. So this gives you an inspiration of how to use it. So the way that I made my background for this, this spring collaboration is I started out with some pastel colored paints on my 12 by 12 gel plate. And instead of taking a full print you know, where you press the whole thing down and take one color. I just kind of put some colors on, patted the paper very lightly so that it was only in places, and then um, put some different colors on, did that same thing until I got a piece of paper that had uh, random bits of light pastel colors all over it. And I'm making multiple as I'm going because that's just how gel printing is. You can't really do it one at a time. So then the next thing I did was to spread an entire layer of titanium white paint, put a stencil down and pick up the white paint through the stencil. And then now I'm applying different colors of the same pastels that I was using through the stencil using some sponge daubers. So I'm putting a little pink here, a little pink there, a little lavender here, some blue, you know, yellow, and filling it up that whole flowery stencil that, um, I've laid down so now it's white underneath lifted up so then when I lift that whole thing up now I've got a white background with colors and then I print that um, using a lift method by lifting everything off with white onto another piece a and that's one that has some paints already on it and then I end up with something like this so I've I really wanted pastels for spring. I think that pastels are where to go for spring. And also, um, of course, you've got your flowers all over the place. So then, then the next step I did, um, just to add a little bit more oomph to the background, because it was very light. Uh, I picked one that I was planning on using. You know, the other ones I'm using for something else. I'm going to make cards out of them or whatever. But for the one I was planning on sharing, I decided to give it a little bit more color by using the Distress Oxide Sprays. These are, these are the new ones. They're like the oxide pads in that they have a combination ink that oxidizes with water. So it becomes pastel when you spray it with water, basically. So I used pink, blue, yellow, um, purple green. Uh, I will list the colors that I used for the paints and for the Distress Oxides in the description box below because I can't remember off the top of my head. But I um, sprayed those, sprayed them with water, and then rolled over them with some paper to just kind of blot it up. And I got, an, I got more pastel-y layers on there. Then just as a final step, I used some titanium white randomly through the same stencil to kind of bring out some some bright areas. Then I shared this with the other artists so they could print it out. And I also printed out one myself to use because I printed out everyone else's. So I've got Bea's, I've got Peg's, I've got my own, I've got Gina's um, backgrounds here. And I sealed them using some Liquitex clear gesso. I printed them on lightweight printer paper. I know some of the others are going to print them on different papers. You can print on whatever paper you want. I wanted to use uh, collage because that's my favorite thing to do. So I printed them on lightweight printer paper using my inkjet printer. Now, if you, if you print them on a laser printer or if you 
print them out and then get them copied into a photocopy, a color photocopy, you don't have to seal it. But I'm not planning on doing any of that. I have this crappy inkjet printer and that's what I get. <laughs> that's what I have. Uh, the colors were a little bit off. I did compare um, my actual one to the printed copy that I printed off and it was just a slight color shift, but not bad. Sealed it up with that um, clear gesso to give it a little bit more weight. You could also seal it with uh, a fluid matte medium. And what I use to apply the sealer is a sponge brayer, which is kind of a kid's, a kid's paint toy, but they're great for doing something like this. And I was able to get that, that gesso all over the papers, sealed in all that inkjet printing so that I could then go ahead and use it in collage. So then I started to tear it up and um, this is spring. This is the collaboration for spring. And I was interested when I was doing some research about the about spring, what that is. It's the vernal equinox. And this year, the vernal equinox happens to be at the same time as the full moon for March, which doesn't happen very often. But that's for a different thing. <laughs> I also, I also uh, know that the vernal equinox is when all over the world, the day and night, the time that it's dark, the time that it's light is the same. So it's kind of a half and half. It's also the rebirth, you know, the, the cold dead earth is coming back to life. Plants are springing out. Um, things that, that represent that are flowers and eggs. Eggs re represent rebirth. And um, then also the March hare, the, the, the madness of March, also a bunny is something that has to do with the spring equinox. These are all symbols that happen at the, at, at spring. And um, there's other names for it. There's lots of information out there if you want to find out more. But the thing that, that jumped out at me was this idea of half night, half day. And then past this, this uh, spring equinox, then the days start getting longer and longer and longer until at summer equinox we have the longest day of the year. So I wanted to do my background by having half light, half dark. So I used the pieces of paper that I thought were the darkest and the pieces of paper that I thought were the lightest and put them kind of splitting my page, um, you know, separating it down the middle. And then I use some glazing medium and some high flow paint, high flow paint in indigo and teal and a little bit of titanium white to lighten it up and a lot of glazing medium. Glazing medium makes it more transparent. So it's a great way to get transparent layers, kind of calm everything down and make everything unified. And then I was able to get my light side and my dark side while still having pattern from everyone's uh, backgrounds showing through. So very happy with that. Then um, I decided to make a, a maiden goddess and throw in some of the symbolism for spring. So I started with this piece of paper that is Peg's, one of Peg's. She had two actually. And one of them I thought had a lot of Caucasian skin tone on it, which is a kind of a pink, pinky tan color. And I think it's probably a combination of a light pink and um, uh, unbleached titanium or Titan buff. But I really thought it was skin tone. And that's kind of what gave me the idea of doing this, this uh, maiden image with symbolism of spring. Um, the sun is warming up the earth. There's an egg, there's a bunny, there's flowers, that type of stuff. So I am, um, I didn't draw anything. I just started to cut with a sharp pair of scissors, cutting out pieces of paper to create the body and the arms and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, laying them out on the page as I'm going. This is the Arteza acrylic 
paper pad. This is a non-bleeding, very thick paper in a pad that is supposed to be good for acrylic painting. I haven't actually painted any acrylic on it at all. I have so far collaged on it and I made a painting with um, gouache, which is a opaque watercolor product. I've done two pages out of it. This is the third thing that I've done in this. I actually really love this and I think I might just remove it from the spiral and frame it and put it in my house because I love how it turned out and I I really enjoyed this process. I was very focused. It was like art therapy for me. I'm having some st stressful times um, in my family and just sitting and doing this was so, so peaceful for me and so relaxing and so I think I am actually going to just frame it and hang it up somewhere in my house, maybe in my studio, maybe downstairs somewhere. I don't know, but um, I like it. I'll probably scan it and uh, have it as an option for prints as well at some point because I like the way it turned out. But I wanted the sunshine. That was kind of a circular image in one of the digital. I think it, that one was also pigs. <laughs> But I'm using them all. I'm not like worried about who made what or, um, you know, using them as whole pieces. I'm cutting them up. I'm tearing them up. I'm focused on the colors and patterns. I do cut out some of the patterns that I find in the, in the background, you know. Sometimes splattered on or printed on paint suddenly has some sort of shape. And you're like, oh that's the shape of something, you know? So I did find some shapes. I also just used it based on the color of what it was or the pattern of what it was. So I lost track of which pieces were what. I used all four of them um, almost all the way up. There's a few scraps left, but not much left in those full eight by 10 and a half prints. So here's where like that little arabesque type of a shape I thought kind of looked flowerish so I cut it out. Um, this flower print was actually printed on the paper down here at the bottom. I cut that one out. Cut some of the circles out but mostly I'm just intuitively cutting shapes, uh, leaf shapes, fronds, things like that to create what I'm trying to make here. A female with a flower crown holding an egg, eventually holding a bunny. <laughs> the bunny doesn't come in anytime soon, I don't think. And then a lot of uh, floral shapes around. And then, of course, the uh, sun or moon, whichever, you, it's probably the sun in this case because it's on the light side up there in the corner. So I will tell you that this was an ex this was a, a long process. Uh, just making all the collage and everything alone was uh, over three hours, maybe maybe almost four hours. And then, of course, making the backgrounds, that took time too. I don't know. I don't remember how much time that was, maybe an hour. But I made multiples. But um, So this is sped up very fast. That's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> this is sped up. Most of it is eight times fast and some of it is 16 times fast. I usually use four times fast with some slowdowns to two times fast in my videos, but I needed to cram this all into 20 minutes. And so that's the reason it's so fast. I still think you can see what's going on. You can see um, that I'm cutting out shapes and gluing them down with Liqu Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. Here I'm drawing on the back of a piece because I wanted the bunny to be white. So, um, I drew on the back of one of the, the printed out pieces to make the bunny. But all the rest of it is just cut out of the painty parts of the, of the paper. So there's the little bunny. It's supposed to be a hare, but uh, it's really a bunny. <laughs> Hares have a lot skinnier bodies and longer legs and longer ears. It's so it's more, it's really more of a bunny. But I have this, this whole thing with bunnies because there's a lot of bunnies in my backyard. Sometimes they eat the plants, and so I get kind of mad. <laughs> but yet, they're so cute that I like to watch them, and sometimes they bring their little bunny babies. It's uh, 
it's, I don't know, it's this love hate thing going on with bunnies. So I've, I tend to use them in my artwork quite a bit. And there's quite a few things on my channel that are about bunnies. But yeah, I even have this whole video about snarky bunnies and the teenage bunnies in the backyard. And yeah, anyway, I'll try to find it. I don't know where it is, but I'll try to find it and link it if I can remember to do that in the iCards or in the end screen at the end. But yeah, just cutting, gluing, cutting, gluing little shapes. I've got some butterflies. I've got a dragonfly. I've got some plants climbing up the side. I've got the egg in her hand. Um, then once I've glued everything down that I feel I need to glue down, I start in with some detailing and that's of course starting drawing the face. I'm using my mechanical pencil to start out with and then I switch to my Stabilo All Graphite Pencil, which is a water reactive graphite um, to do a lot of the, the work. But I start out with my, my mechanical pencil. So drawing eyes, drawing nose, drawing mouth, um, trying to get everything centered properly and placed properly, <laughs> you know, like that. And then I get my Neocolor 2 water soluble pastels out. I've taken the tape off and on one side the tape tore uh, the page and so I filled that in with some color and then I'm kind of using the pastels to intensify areas I'm, I'm happy with the colors that I've collaged on, but I might want to just bump up a color a little bit, like make it a little bit more pink or something like that. Um, maybe make some of the areas of the skin a little bit more skin color if they've got too much of the green. So I'm using the pastels to do that. And I'm just, I'm applying them directly to the page and then blending them with a water tank brush so that they don't look as crayon-y. You know, a crayon has a certain look. So if you blend it out with the water, then it gets less crayon-y. <laughs> and I'm adding shadows and um, things like that. Um, highlights with the white crayon to kind of bring out the face more, make it look more um, contoured and like there, I bumped up the pink on that big flower at the bottom, that kind of protea looking flower and the other little ones that I had cut out, like shapes that I actually cut out. And then at the bottom down here, there's some like rounded shapes and I end up making those into flowers at the end um, to fill in that bottom section because the shapes were already there. I didn't need to cut anything out. They were already on the paper that I had applied. Adding some gray shadows to the bunny, adding, uh, you know, more bits. Then this is where I have the Stabilo All pencil, which it's not the black one that you guys see a lot. It's the graphite one, so it's gray. But I'm going through and adding a shadow all around all the pieces, or pretty much all the pieces that I have glued on with this gray. I didn't go pure black. I went with gray. And then I add some black in with the Posca pen at the end. So um, I didn't want to go for a completely illustrative look where every single shape is drawn around with a black line. I didn't want that look, but I still like definition and shading. And I think that it blends the page together by having those sh shadows and highlights. So then I go and I blend a lot of that graphite um, with water, with the water tank brush again. Uh, it's water, sol graphite's water soluble, so it just always is, but sometimes it's a harder graphite than others, so if you have a real soft one, you can usually blend it with a water brush. And then here I am adding just some kind of here and there lines with the black, putting the butterfly bodies on, darkening up the eyes, and then I go in and I do a lot of that same type of a, a motion or method with the white Posca pin to add a few like sketchy highlights. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question below. Also, don't forget to go down below the video and hop through the other three artists links. You can just click on the one, go to the next one, then in that one, click on the top one, go to the next one until you come back to mine and you will see how they made their backgrounds and how 
they used the printed backgrounds from all of us together to make whatever art they made. That should be interesting because we all have the same backgrounds and we all will come up with something completely different like we always do because we all have our own style and our, we have our, our own interests. So please do that and give them some love. Tell them Shell sent you. <laughs> and I'm just finishing up the white highlights and then the close-ups are coming very, very soon. Thanks for watching. That's it for me. Bye-bye. <laughs>